In this video, we're going to take a look at loading in the user data and parsing it into our program. Now, the user data was a tad bit different than the other data. Uh, let's take a look at that by going into Streaming Assets and double-clicking on Simulation Data. So here you can see that we have quite a bit more columns of information. Position information, hour, minute, second. The only thing we're really going to use in this particular case is this position X, Y, and Z data information. We just need to use that to visualize where the car is throughout the simulation. Let's go ahead and close that. So we need a new script. So let's go to Scripts, right-click, Create, C-sharp script, and we're going to call this User Parser. Enter. Double-click to open Mono Developer Visual Studio. There we are. All right. So once again, this is not going to be a mono behavior class, so we can get rid of that. This is just going to be a pure C-sharp class. So just like before, we're going to need a list of vector objects. In this case, because we only have a single line we're going to visualize, we only need a single vector. Before we can do that, though, we're actually going to need to use system.collections.generic. We're also going to need to use system.io. Let's create that vector list vector 3, line strip. All right, we can get rid of the update and the start functions. They serve no purpose for us right now. And all we really need is that parse function. So let's go ahead and create a parse file function. So we'll do public void parse file. And in parse file, we're going to take in a string file path. Now inside of here, it's very much what we did before. We're first going to initialize our line strip. It's going to be equal to a new new list containing vector3 objects. Now that we have that list, we need to read in our file, create a new array of string objects called lines is going to be equal to file.readAllLines. We're going to use the file path. Now we have a for loop that's going to iterate over every single line. Once again, we're going to have a header on the top that we can just disregard. So we'll start at i is equal to 1 instead of 0. Check to see if we've hit the end by doing i is less than lines.length, then i++. plus plus. Now within here, we're going to split it. So we'll take a string array, split line is equal to lines, current element, dot split and once again use a comma for that and now we'll do a switch statement now the switch statement is a little bit of overkill as I mentioned already uh, this particular file was already uh, formatted to remove all the additional information but there was collision information and you know, like different reaction timing information that could have been visualized but in this case I wasn't given that to work on so we're just going to do the first element of split line, which contains the uh, flag for it. So in this particular case, we're going to get a P for there. So let's do case, and we get the string P. We want to make sure that we take the position X, Y, and Z value and work with that. Just to make it clear, my particular format of this file had the fifth, sixth, and seventh elements equal to the X, Y, and Z vectors for this user data. So I'm going to do line strip dot add. And for that, what I want to do is create a new vector 3. And within that, I'm going to do float.parse, once again, to convert the string information that I have coming in into an actual floating point value to be stored within this vector. And of course, within float.parse, we're going to take the, that particular line element. And the first one is 5. Now, unlike the last example I did, uh, this one was properly set up. Um, I blame students for the mishap where the data was flip-flopped across axes because I coded the part that spits out all this parsing information and that works just fine. Now that we have that information in the array, we can just go ahead and break. And that's it for loading the information. Now, in the next video, we're going to take a little bit of time and set up our mesh. That is, we're going to take this data in and learn how we can use mesh filters and mesh objects to generate content or procedural content inside of Unity. Thanks.